right, good morning everybody. So today we're working on Forrest's $200 uh, 93 wagon. Uh, winter's coming, so we're gonna be throwing on a quick little lift kit for it. Um, he's been wanting to lift this thing for a while, kind of make it into an off-road beast. So he got these tires, put on his Enkies. So these are 16 inch Enkies that are same dimensions as stock WX wheels. They're from a Saab 92X. Uh, these tires are General Grabber AT2s and a 215 65 R16. And then he got the suspension off Amazon for, was it a first gen Forester? Uh, the rears are, yeah, first gen Forester, and then the fronts are going to be second gen. Forester. Yeah, second gen Foresters. So we're 2007. They were used, so we're just. Kind of doing it on the cheap. Uh, we got some trailing arm spacers. We'll show you guys that too. Um, so let's uh, first thing is just pull it in here and get it up on jack stands and get the old suspension out, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so this is the trailing arm spacer kit that he got off eBay um, from this company. One inch. Yeah, the one inch trailing arm spacers. Um, it's like seventy four bucks. Um, so it's got pretty much everything you need to to move the trailing arm back so the wheel doesn't run into the fender. Um, but we're not doing subframe spacers, which you really should do if you're gonna do a big lift, but um, we don't really have time for that, so this is just kind of a quick way to do it. Um, obviously, if you wanna have it lifted any more than this, you're gonna need subframe spacers to keep your axles from popping boots and stuff. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get it up on jack stand and start taking it apart. So first thing I'll disconnect the brake line, let's pull a little clip off. And then <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna look awesome. So these older struts have a, a loop here. I basically bent it out of the way and cut it uh, to get the brake line out. So normally it's in there kind of like that. So the newer ones just have uh, the bolt-in style, which is a lot nicer, but I don't have those brake lines. So I'm just gonna zip tie it through that bolt hole and have it sit right here. But Basically just cut the old one off so you don't have to bleed the brakes after because I'm throwing these struts away anyway. So. gonna throw in the new one and uh, before we take, take everything else apart let's see how, how it fits. Let's get it through it, I'll put a nut on it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, we're gonna do a little test fit with a full droop. Yeah. I might chop that a little. We'll find That's out. Pretty, we'll see. pretty close. I think it'll be alright. Zip tie on there, just kind of looped it around twice, pull it tight, and it's not going anywhere. All right, so now we get started on the rear. It's basically the same thing get the brake line off, um, get the strut out, and then we'll have to mess with the trailing arm. But that bracket basically goes on under here, I think. So we'll, we'll show that when we get to it. But if you don't know, the, you have to take these speaker covers off, and the tops of the struts are in there with the speakers. So, I went ahead and got that pulled off. So on the rear, in order to get to one of the strut bolts, you gotta take the speaker out, and there's just two little 10 mils. Right there, right there, and there's one right there. And then you just kinda move the speaker over to the side. Basically the newer struts, the Forester struts, the bolt pattern on the top hat is just a little bit bigger. So we're basically going to oval out each of the bolt holes just enough to accept those studs. And uh, we'll do some measuring to get it just right and mark it with Sharpie, but uh, we should be able to just oval out each bolt hole towards the outside um, just enough to fit these in and then just put nuts on there with washers. It's pretty common. So quick change of plans, uh, started drilling the holes and luckily I don't care about this car too much, but basically we realized that after we drilled the holes that the center of the strut is not going to line up with that big circle and so it wasn't really going to work unless we drilled two more holes and then I just thought about it which is the other, the other option to this is swapping the top hats which I was hoping to use the, the brand new top hats that came with my brand new struts, but we were actually looking at it and it looks like uh, the old top hats will actually lift it a little bit more. Um, so like I can touch the top of the stud here and the top of the, the strut and it's like pretty even, whereas this one is sunken in a little bit. You can see the height difference in the spring. So I think I'm just going to take these to work and swap the top hats over the spring compressor. Um, you can rent a spring compressor from like O'Reilly's or Napa or something. The ones that you rent are a little bit sketchy. I have a wall mounted one at work that I'm just going to use. I won't be able to film at work, but uh, we'll basically come back to this when I have the, that top hat on this, on this spring. So the idea with the trailing arm spacers here, uh, there's three bolts per side, so there's the two and then the one, and it came with new bolts. Um, the idea of it is, so that's the trailing arm right there, and that's the trailing arm bracket. There's two bolts there, and let's see, one bolt there, and so that's a pivot point, so when you lower the, so, let me get out of the sun. If you lower the suspension, making it taller, it actually brings the wheel more forward because you're tilting it that way. So 
So if you space the trailing arm down and then lower it, then you keep the wheel centered and you don't end up rubbing here. So um, that's basically the idea. There's three different uh, factory Subaru trailing arm sizes uh, as far as like spacing from the body. Um, there's the standard, which this car has because it's not an Outback or anything. Then there's the Outback one, which is a little bit taller. Then there's the Forester one. I could have gotten the Forester ones, but um, I just bought these for like 70 bucks on eBay rather than going uh, to the junkyard and trying to get some off of Forester. It was just less work for me. But you could get Forester ones or Outback ones might work as well. Uh, you might end up with a little bit of rubbing. But these should should be okay. They're one inch. So, and worst case scenario, I'm not opposed to uh, cutting or bashing in stuff with uh, with a hammer. So, if uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe I might trim that a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. I don't think it'll rub, but uh, that's basically the idea of doing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start taking those three 17 mil bolts out, and then we'll just slide these in there and put in the longer bolts and look up the torque specs and torque them down. So that's it with it removed. Um, you can see the old bolts are pretty short and the new bolts should be about an inch longer, which it looks like they are. So I think it came with washers too, because these have the built-in locking washer and regular washer. So it should have come with its own in there. So I'll just uh, start getting that in there. Oh, I uh, won't be able to record while I put this in because I need both my hands, but that's uh, the first bracket and then that single one will just go right there. I should be able to just push it up and get the bolt started. So we are torquing these to 90 foot pounds. The torque specs like 80 something. 89. 89. So we're just gonna do 90. All three of them. Oh, I didn't grab the mic too soft. Okay, so the old top hats from the car are on the Forester struts. I did have to put some washers. I don't know if you can even see that. It's like no light. But I had to put some washers in on the shaft to uh, keep the top hat from clunking up and down to the spacing on it is just a little bit different. Um, but that should be pretty obvious when you're putting it together. Uh, if you just compare both the struts. So other than that, it was pretty, Pretty simple. Okay, so yeah, we're torquing them to 130 foot pounds. Alright, there she is. All in there. We just uh, zip tied our brake line in there because that clip didn't actually work. So, but it's actually in the mount and just zip tied in, so it's not going anywhere. So, let's try to fit the tires now. Touching it there. Only off the ground. And it goes well, on. 
We can hammer it in in that little spot right there. And just barely clear the stuff. Barely. <laughs> Perfect. So, I think we're just going to massage this lip in right here, just a little bit up. Uh, just in case, like, I, if I was off-road and it went off, this tire went all the way down, I wanted to touch there and not spin. review of what it's going to look like. Um, we're going to put it down on these little wheelie carts we got uh, on the front and just set the, the rear on the ground and then we can kind of set our own sort of you know ghetto alignment with a tape measure just to kind of get the toe straight because when you lift a car like this it's going to greatly affect your alignment. So um, the whole car is going to be realigned but just for now we're going to just set the toe in the front to be sort of even so we don't chew up the tires right away. But <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. That's way taller than what's his name. <laughs> I think it needs to settle a little bit. It's uh, it's fucking lifted. I mean. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's take it for a test drive. See if it drives. Try not to set my alarm off. Something's gonna rub on something. There's no way. You want to <laughs> it's fucking tall. We'll get some video tomorrow on the daily. Yeah. No, it's actually pretty good. I think we're just gonna end the video here. So next up is an is an alignment and a test drive, but we might have to do a little clearancing in the front. Uh, the plastic wheel well looks like it might be touching, and there's a little piece of metal in there. I might just have to hammer in, but that's pretty much it. Um, so if you guys have any questions, you know, post them in the comments. We'll try to help out. But uh, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.